My name is Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional bike and kit tester for nearly 25 years. And this video is sponsored by Giro Cycling UK by Peaties and Crud. So don't worry about the paid promotion sticker. That's nothing to do with the fact that I'm talking about a Specialized. Because this bike here is, I'm gonna get out straight out there and say it, it's bloody brilliant. And uh, I hope you've already watched the live ride review uh, to clear you in on how it actually rides. But for now, I'm gonna have a quick close up look at the details and uh, just talk you through some of the stats and why I think it's such a good bike. So this is the Specialized Stump Jumper Evo Comp Alloy, which as the name suggests means you get an alloy frame. Now, it's where the Stump Jumper Evo actually started. It kind of started as an experimental bike, much longer, slacker and lower uh, than the carbon Stump Jumper trail bikes of the time. And it was an instant smash hit. So. Uh, they made it into car. It only came out in two sizes to start with, uh, but they made it into carbon. And then when they brought out the new Stump Jumper Evo, that came out in carbon first. And it's actually taken them a while to uh, bring out an affordable alloy version because rather than just kind of skimping on the features, they fully loaded it with everything that makes the Stump Jumper so outstanding. And first off, that means it's kind of difficult to see in there but it means you get adjustable headset cups. So this has currently got the plus or minus headset cup in there, but it comes stock with, you know, I've just got it in my pocket here. It comes stock with this headset cap. So all you do is you literally just undo the stem bolts, uh, undo the steerer bolt, slide the stem off, uh, change this uh, headset cup, and you can either, I mean, it comes with 64.5 degrees, uh, head angle as standard, but you can go to 63.5, which is how I've got it set up here, or 65.5 if you fancy something steeper. And then at the back on the horse link here, you can see you've got a little high or low chip, depending on whether that bolt is at front or back, and that gives you another half a degree in terms of uh, geometry adjustment at the, at the front. And also it drops the bottom bracket slightly because thankfully while the original uh, Stump Jumper Alloy had a 327 mil absolutely slammed bottom bracket, this has got a slightly more reasonable 340 mil bottom bracket. And then in terms of the rest of the geometry, uh, where I think is a real win in terms of climbing, it's a remarkably good technical climb on this bike, uh, f considering it weighs uh, the best part, well, it weighs over 16 kilos before you put pedals on it, this S4 size, is you've got a seat angle that, depending on the size, is between 76.9 and 78 degrees. Uh, so really good forward seat post on it, and then plenty of uh, seat, seat post extension, you can see there. I mean, that's a 175 mil uh, Exfusion Manic dropper, but because there's only a 425 mil seat tube, I can still get plenty of extension on there, and it'd be easy for me to size up to an S5, which is 445 mil seat tube, or even an S6, which is I think 528 mil long reach, and a 465 seat tube. But as it is, I've got a 475 mil reach, and then on the S5, it would be a 498 mil reach. So fairly rangy, but not crazy. And it's similar with the stem choice as well. I mean, they've gone for a 50 mil. I'd maybe switch to a 35 just to get it a little bit more twitchy and uh, slam that front end faster into corners, but certainly not really struggled. And again, when you're climbing, it's quite nice to have that bit more stability in there. And then you've got 800 mil bars. You've got really nice soft compound specialized grips. Uh, with just a neat collar on the inside, so there's no metal on the outside banging into the palm of your hands. You've got SRAM Code R brakes, and it's 200 mil rotors, front and rear, so you've got tons of stopping power. And, talking of control, you've got the Butcher Grid Trail T9. So, properly sticky, slow rebound uh, rubber compound. Uh, I think I went through 17 different rubber compounds perfecting that tyre and it's really, really down grippy. It has very occasional moments on wet routes, I think just where the knobs kind of don't come back into shape quite fast enough, but for 99% of this tyre, you can rail this thing like glue. And you've also got a Fox 36 rhythm fork, just a great benchmark budget fork. Uh, you've got a grip damper in there, pretty damn simple, but it just does the job really, really well. Not quite as supportive in the mid-stroke as a Performance Elite or a factory, but for a fraction of the price. And actually, because the uh, alloy they use in the crown is slightly heavier, slightly tougher, this is basically what they use on their e-bike forks, I think it's actually slightly stiffer. So, and then in terms of transmission kit, you've got SRAM NX, 
Eagle, you've got a 30 tooth front chain ring, so plenty of winching uh, ratio there, and also it's steel. So if you do sump it out, then A, it's like to be a lot tougher, it's like harder wearing than an chain chainring, and you've got a uh, chainring gut, but also, you know, it'll push, you can even bend it back to finish your ride. Plus, you've got ISCG chain guide tabs in behind there as well. And you can see just main pivot point just sitting above and behind the chain line there. So there's a bit of anti-squat, but mostly this bike is about traction, 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 and just a really smooth ride over really chunky, chundery ground, and that's what it absolutely excels at. And then out the back, you've got NX, rear mech, uh, NX 11 to 50 rear cassette. I mean, the rear hub is a bit chunky, a bit clunky when it comes to pickup, and I don't think the wheel's the lightest, but they are 30 mil internal, and I've rimmed them plenty of times without any, without any dents or complaints. And while I've still got it set up with tubes, you get the tubeless valves in the build kit with it, so that's nice and easy to set up. And, as kind of a bit of a safety fuse, they've put the Eliminator tread, which is faster rolling, but they've also put it in the T7 compound. So a harder, faster rolling compound, but that's more likely to slide out on the back than it is on the front. So, its default setting is kind of really, really sticky up front, and then a bit lively at the back end. And even though, you know, the chain stays relatively long, it's 441 on the first four sizes, and goes up to 451 on the long, on the bigger sizes, so you're getting what they specialise called ride-tuned proportional geometry. It's actually, with that tyre on the back, I mean, it's nowhere near as uh, kind of jive-happy as the Status, their designated mullet bike, but it's surprisingly keen to get the back end stepping out, and it will certainly lose that before it loses the front end. But again, you know, go watch the live ride video if you want to see how excited I get riding this bike. And also, although this is an alloy bike and obviously more affordable than the carbon models, you've got some beautiful detailing in here. I mean, these machined linkages, they wouldn't look out of place on something like a Hope bike. And plus you've got all the ge geometry adjustment, you've got double-sided clevis pivots there, you've got this really, really neat asymmetric uh, brace across the frame there. It's what Specialized started on their demo bikes. And it's just, you know, even things like the cable tie, even the cable guides where they go into the frame, just really, really neat. And then of course, and as well as this really neat little SWAT uh, clip-in multi-tool on the back, you've also got specialized signature in-frame SWAT storage. I mean, other brands are now producing something similar, but it was Specialized who first pioneered the idea of actually using all this space inside the frame for your spares, water and tools is what SWAT stands for. What I think is a far better use for this space is that you can actually fit three excellent jumbo sausage rolls from Kendall's Butchers in there. Mmm, that tastes delicious. Look at that. Get three of them up there. No, not quite sure I'm gonna fetch that one out, if I'm honest. And then coming around to the other side, you can see this Float X, uh, what they call RX Trail Tuned, uh, Evo shock on there, really, really well sorted shock now. Specialized has been working on this tune for a while, and it just, I have to say, it feels fantastic. It really makes you wonder why you'd want to spend more. Uh, they've just got this kinematic so well sorted now with that chainstay pivot and everything else. And, you know, just you get a little handle lever on there so you don't have to worry about having an Allen key to take it out. And you get a threaded bottom bracket as well. So there's no worries about press fit bottom bracket. And what's really, really neat is that internal cable routing now runs inside that asymmetric stut and then back out to the rear of the bike. So uh, really, really clean lines throughout. And it just certainly doesn't look like a cheap bike. And as you say, please watch the ride, live ride review because you'll realize it does not ride like a cheap bike either. So, thanks very much to uh, Specialized for sending me the bike for test. Uh, like I say, thanks to Giro Cycling, Peaties and Crud for sponsoring the channel. Massive thanks to uh, my Patreon supporters who pledge on a monthly basis. Just starts at $3, but it really makes a massive difference in how much time I can spend in front of the camera and not doing my other testing work for websites and uh, magazines and things like that. Because believe me, YouTube does not pay on its own. So if you really like what I'm doing, please consider joining the, uh, me on Patreon and uh, helping out in the channel that way. And you'll get exclusive, extended, behind the scenes and ad-free edits as a thank you. But you can help the channel anyway by subscribing, by, click, click, by clicking for notifications and giving this video a thumbs up. 
Like I say, make sure you watch the uh, special, make sure you watch the live ride review on this bike, watch the live ride review on the Carbon Stump Jumper Evo and this Carbon Stump Jumper, watch the Epic Evo review, and there's even a specialised Tiro uh, electric town bike review coming up as well. And I should have my hands on a Canevo SL very shortly as well. And uh, yeah, I've done Levo SL. I've done tons of specialised. And I've got my uh, custom uh, Chisel XC build up as well. So if you like specialised, there's a ton of content on the site for you to look at. And I cover off every other brand on here as well. So obvious competitor to this bike, for example, is the Canyon Spectral, which I've ridden in the carbon version, but I've not ridden in the alloy version as yet. But for now, I've been Guy Kestivan on Guy Kest TV talking about the specialised Stump Jumper Evo Comp Alloy. Fantastically engineered, brilliantly versatile, massively capable, yet still affordable, sausage roll smuggling, aggro all-rounder.